All right, it is seven o'clock, so it's time to get started. My name is Liz. Welcome to the Zoom meeting tonight. Um, I can see that we've got another one of our uh, folks, our chaperones on, Holly. Hello, Holly. So if you could just drop in the chat your name, your traveler name and your name if you're traveling, um, that would be amazing. And if you can, uh, change your name on the Zoom thing so that we know who you are. Um, so you can see that mine says Liz right down in the corner. Um, and most of you, it looks like you have the right name on there, but some of you don't. So if you want to change it, feel free um, and change it because it's uh, good to get to know you and to sort of put faces with names. So tonight's meeting is not going to be super long. It's a little bit of a short meeting. I just have a, a few things to talk to you all about um, regarding some policies and rules and things like that that we've got to get um under control before our 110 day limit. So at 110 days, that's typically when um, EF Tour starts to cut things off and or charge more money if things have to change. So I wanna talk about these things before that, that limit, that cutoff happens so that no one gets caught um, not having information that they need. And, ooh, thank you. Um, so that you'll have, you'll be more than prepared um, to, to reach that day 110 um, with all the information that you need. So I have a little bit of a PowerPoint to share with you. So I'm gonna share that in just a second, but welcome, welcome. Like I said, my name is Liz and feel free to drop in the chat who you are um, and who you're traveling with. So we can see that you're here. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. Also, I have my background down. I don't know if you can see it, but I would really like to be here <laughs> wherever that is uh, with the uh, palm trees and the sunshine. I'm gonna share. Last week, I know, or last month, that um, my uh, screen was not sharing appropriately and there was a big kind of like a gray box in the middle of it. Is that happening again this time around? Can you see that? Can you see the whole? Can you see my all aboard situation here? Good. And I think it was because this computer is not used to me doing a slideshow on it. So I'm going to bring the slideshow up. Can you see the whole thing? Or is there a gray box in the way? We're good? All right. Very good. Excellent. <clears throat> so this is what I like to call our all aboard meeting. So we have 143 days until our trip. And as I mentioned, 110 days is the day that EF Tours has decided that there's certain information that they need. And if they don't have it, they can charge you extra money. Um, and they start to incur sort of like a penalty for things that we may not have given them that they need. So that day actually is coming up quickly. It's March 20th, March 20th-ish, 20th, 21st, somewhere in that range. Um, and it's very close to our next meeting. So I thought I would give you this information now so that you have about a month or so to prepare. So during this meeting, we're gonna talk about roommate assignments. We're gonna talk about passports always. Um, payments, payment plans, uh, what happens if you're on a manual payment plan, our remaining meeting schedule and what we're gonna be talking about during those meetings. And then, ooh, excuse me, of course, if you have any questions, we can address those at the end as well. So feel free to put questions in the chat. I did see that um, one, other, one of our other chaperones, Amy, hopped on the call here too, so that is great. So Amy and Holly, if you all want to um, sort of check out the chat while we're doing this, that would be great. So up first, roommate assignments. So adults, if you wish to have a single room, you can, that's an upgrade. All you have to do is send me the request or call into Traveler uh, care, the customer care uh, on the traveler side for EF, you can upgrade your room. And I believe it's $70 per night to upgrade to a single room. If you don't send me a request and you just want to roll the dice um, with your rooming assignments, you'll be paired up with another room, uh, random adult traveler. If you're a female and you identify as female um, in the system, you'll be paired up with another female traveler. If you're male and you identify as male in the system, you'll be paired up with another male traveler, just FYI. So your roommate assignment is not gonna change on the trip. Whoever you get assigned to will be your roommate for the whole, the whole trip. Um, and there's only two adults to a room, unless you upgrade. 
So as I mentioned, if you want to upgrade to a single room, it's $70 per night that we're on our trip. And you can either do that through me or you can call the 800 number, which I've put on a slide upcoming in the um, presentation as well. Um, there are student upgrades as well. I didn't get a lot of information about those because typically um, the kiddos don't really care and they just room with whoever. Um, to upgrade to a family room, um, if an adult and a, and a kiddo or your, your daughter want to room together, I believe that that is an upgrade, a paid upgrade as well, but I'll have to double check with that. So what happens with the, the students or the girls, the kiddos that are going on the trip, um, your rooms could be double, triple, or quadruple. Um, I've seen all kinds of rooms. Once I saw a room with six beds in it, um, and that was a fun party for kiddos that stayed in that room. Um, and we assign student roommates on the trip. So typically what will happen is the tour director will give me a piece of paper and they'll say, okay, for tonight, we are going to have rooms with three beds in it. So there'll be three blanks for each room and I'll be filling it in as we go. Of course, I'll stand up on the bus or the boat and say, hey, who do you guys want a roommate with? Let me know, or a room with, let me know. Um, I'm not going to put you with folks that you don't necessarily know and or um, if you make friends on the trip, which hopefully you will, and you say, hey, I want a room with Sophia. Um, I just met her and she seems super cool and, and I want a room with her for the rest of the trip. We can make that happen as well. So um, youth rooms are kind of like um, flexible as we go, only because I don't know how many beds are going to be in the room. Adults, two adults to a room, um, you'll be sort of randomly paired with somebody unless you send me an upgrade request. Also, adults, if you know someone else that's going on the trip and you want to room with them, say, for example, Holly and Amy are best friends at home and you're both going on this trip, you can uh, be assigned together. I can assign you together. Just send me a roommate request. All right. Um, any questions on rooming? You can feel free to unmute yourself as well. Or write it in the chat. All right. So passports. Very, very, very important. There are 27 of you who have not put your passports in yet. Um, passport, you must enter your passport information into your account by March 20th. We've got to have that in the system. This is how they book our plane tickets. This is how they book our hotel rooms. The longer it takes for us to put passport information into the EF system, the longer it's going to take us to get those things because they can't book our airplane tickets or our hotels until they have passport information for everyone. On the past two trips, three trips that I've done, the hotels actually, a lot of them have required a copy of the passport when we're checking in. Um, and so during our last meeting in June, I'll be getting a color copy of everyone's passport along with your health paperwork, medication paperwork, all of that stuff. Um, and I'll be carrying it with me in a little photo album just in case they ask me for it. So be prepared to provide that information um, in June at our June meeting. And we're going to talk about that meeting a little bit later in this, in this one here. So a couple of quick things about passports. Your passport must be valid for six months after the tour. I think I've said this before. My passport expires or my old passport expires in November 2024. So I just got mine renewed. I sent it to the passport renewal place, um, gosh, mid-January, and I just got it back like yesterday. So it's not taking a super long time, but I would not be able to travel with that passport because it expired within six months after our trip. So I did catch one in the system. I can see that you've entered your passport and I can see what the expiration date is. So I've been checking and I did catch one person that entered information, their passport was expiring in August, um, but they let me know that they got a new passport, yay, and they're gonna put the new stuff in. I'm disappointed to find out that the number is not the same. So if you are getting your passport and you have to renew it, don't put the old information in there. My passport number for my new passport is not the same passport number that I had before, which is kind of sad because I memorized it. Um, so I've got a new one to memorize now. And um, don't, don't bother putting it in there if you're still waiting on your passport renewal. You're going to have to switch it anyway. So keep that in mind. If you're non, a non-U.S. citizen, there may be additional paperwork, additional documents in order to travel. So if you are not from the United States originally, if you're a non-U.S. citizen, just let me know um, and or call the travel number, that 800 number for EF, and they'll let you know what additional documents you might need. Um, so just want to mention that real quick. So in the system, when you log into your system, 
Um, I think I've mentioned this before as well, but my, you guys all call me Liz. That's what I like to be called. In EF system, my name is Elizabeth Schmidt because on my passport, it says Elizabeth Schmidt. So even though I like to use Liz as my nickname, I do not use it in EF because that's not what's on my passport. The name that you've entered in EF tour is the name that's gonna go on your plane tickets and on the hotel reservation. If it doesn't match the passport, you're gonna get charged anywhere between $200 and $2,000 to fix this. This happened for our Japan trip. Um, one of our folks had a name that they were going by. Um, their birth name uh, was not the same as the name that they currently go by. And so they put the name that they currently go by into the system and it's not the same name that's on their passport that they had gotten, you know, six years ago or whatever. And it costs around $1,800 to fix that. They did not notice until it was almost trip time. So please make sure that whatever name and gender you have in EF tours, um, that it matches exactly on your passport and then your EF tours, okay? No nickname. The last um, time to fix this is March 20th. That is our 110 day mark. And I'm telling you March 20th, but I really think it's like March 21st, 22nd in that range, but we're gonna go with March 20th, March 20th. So make sure that your name and your birthday and your gender all match passport and your name on your EF account, please. All travelers are also gonna be required to send me a color copy of your passport. I mentioned this before. I do have um, a copy copy machine at Hoover. This is where we're gonna have our in-person meeting in June. So if you don't have a color copier um, or if you just wanna wait until that day, you certainly can. I'll make a color copy of your passport at Hoover on that day and I'll just keep a copy of it. Like I said, um, I just like to have it just in case and especially we're gonna knock on wood and hope that no one loses their passport. Um, but I'm going to carry a copy of everyone's passport just in case that does happen. A lot of group leaders, um, they carry uh, passports for their travelers. I do not. If you're old enough to come on this trip um, and travel around the world, you are old enough to carry and maintain your own passport. So be prepared to do that. You are in charge of carrying your own passport. I will not carry it for you. Um, and we're not gonna lose it. We're gonna carry it with us all the time because you never know what can happen on an international trip. Uh, we're not gonna leave it in hotels. We're not gonna leave it in backpacks sitting on the floor of an airport. It's going to be on your person at all times, and you're going to touch it like I do. I have mine in like a little shoulder strap thing that I do, and I kind of touch it and just make sure it's there all the time. It's like my little security blanket, and you're going to do that too. We're going to get in the habit. So any questions, comments, or concerns about passports? I don't mean to be like, but it's really important to get the passports in now, especially if you've never gotten one before. You want to make sure that you get it in. Um, so that you can have your passport in time. I also had a person who came on our Japan trip who got their passport in the mail the day we left, um, literally in the mail the day we left. So they were not on the plane in the morning. They did not travel with us. They got their passport. They called EF. They had to arrange for another plane ticket and actually met us in Tokyo at Tokyo Disney. They flew by themselves. They were 13 and it cost them an extra $2,000 to do so. So please don't let that happen to you. Get your passport in now um, so that we can avoid all of that. Any questions, comments, general concerns about passporting? Okay, fantastic. All right, up next, payment plans. So payment plans, your, your payments I was noticing today, most of you are getting down there, which is fantastic. A uh, few of you are still on manual payment plans. So in order to continue on your manual payment plan, without fees, you must be paid in full by March 20th. After March 20th, if you're on a manual payment plan, you're gonna incur fees for staying on that manual payment plan. You can, however, switch to an automatic plan if you don't think that you're gonna be paid up in full by March 20th. And all you have to do is call that customer care line and they can switch it. And that's the 800 number that I've been talking about the whole presentation here, the 1-800-665-5364. Um, that's the customer care line for travelers. So feel free to call that if you need anything, but especially if you're on a manual payment plan and you wish to switch to an automatic payment plan. If you're on an automatic payment plan, you're just gonna keep going um, until you're paid in full. If you are selling cookies um, for this season, what's gonna happen is any money that you, that you get from selling cookies, 
um, is going to either go to EF Tourist to pay for the rest of your trip, or it's going to come back to you in the form of tips so that um, you'll have your tip money completely taken care of for the trip. If it's over that, um, I'm going to have to try to figure out with our accounting situation um, and let you know. Last year when we went to Japan, I put yeah, I gave yen to everyone who I owed money to, and that was fantastic um, because it was a clear like, here's some yen and you can't spend it in the United States. And like, this is technically not like me giving you money for selling cookies, right? Cause that's not really kosher um, with auditing for auditing purposes. So I'm going to double check with our finance team just to make sure that's uh, a cool thing to do. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is send it to EF Tours and they're going to write you a check and send it right on back to you. I know that in the system, there are some of you that actually are owed money by EF Tours and some of you are actually owed quite a bit of money from EF Tours from last cookie season. So I'm going to be looking into that and asking them why they haven't sent you a check yet. And hopefully you'll see one here within the next month or so. Um, any questions about payment plan, manual plan, et cetera? All right, so you do need cash on this trip. Um, luckily, Galapagos and Ecuador, um, they are they do have a local currency, but they take US dollars, which is great. We don't have to exchange money. EF recommends 12 to $15 per person per day for tipping. So this is for, um, for example, the boat, the boat ride that we're gonna be taking from island to island. We're gonna tip the person that drives the boat. Um, we're going to be taking buses while we're there in order to get around. This is for the bus driver. It's for the tour guide. Um, anyone that visits the Galapagos Islands require, is required to be with a tour guide. So we're going to, or some of the places that we are going, like the tortoise, the Highland tortoise facility, um, and there's a couple of other places, and the tour guides there are required, so we're going to tip them out, etc. So this rounds out to about $120 per person. Um, I'll collect the tip money on June 9th at our in-person meeting. So please bring cash if you can in US dollars. I also have a Venmo, which I prefer not to use necessarily, um, but I will you certainly can do Venmo as well, but preferably cash um, cause, because what I'll do is I'll split it up before we go. And then I'll say, hey, uh, Maddie, you know, can you take care of tipping the boat driver and we're on the boat right now, I'm going to hand you a little thank you card with a whole bunch of cash in it, and you're going to be responsible for giving it to our, our boat driver on the way off the boat, okay? Um, you'll need cash on hand for some lunches, snacks, and souvenirs as well. I recommend $25 per day. That's a little low, but at the same time, um, I think all of our lunches in the Galapagos Islands are actually covered. Um, we get breakfast, lunch, and dinner because there's literally nowhere for us to go. It's it's a wild wilderness there. Um, so I think that lunches on the islands are included, but you will have to buy lunches in Quito, um, both before we go to the islands and when we come back to Quito before we fly back to the United States. So keep that in mind. Um, there's also a ton of super cute souvenirs and local made stuff, um, chocolate, ice cream, snacks, that sort of thing. So feel free to um, give yourself extra money and extra cash so that you can purchase those things during your trip as well. I don't collect any of this, you're responsible for that. So make sure that you've got something to carry it around in. Um, especially if you're bringing cash, it can be a lot of cash. So make sure you've got something to keep that in. Um, as we get a little bit closer to the trip though, I will I will talk about debit card, uh, debit card situations and ATMs and that sort of thing. With this trip, um, I need to look into that a little bit more because we are going to a place where, um, you know, just sort of paying people with your, your phone or with a credit card. Um, if they're local vendors on the street, they probably don't take cards and, and Apple Pay and things like that. So cash might be better. Um, but as I mentioned, um, as we get a little bit closer to the trip, I'll have more information about that. Any questions about money? Money, money, money. All right, great. Oops, I do have a comment here, let's see. Um, if you haven't dropped your names in the chat, we're kind of just keeping track of who's coming to these meetings now that we're getting a little bit closer. So um, if you could pop the names of your travelers in the chat or change the name in your little window on the bottom left side of your window to let us know who's traveling, that would be fantastic. And like I said before, plus it gives a face to a name. And as we get closer, we want to know who you are. All right, so here's a couple of just quick little other things that I wanted to talk about. So while we're on tour, um, as I mentioned a whole bunch of times, the Galapagos 
you know, they're islands and there's not a lot of space. So while we're on the tour, we're gonna to be splitting up into smaller groups once we get to the island. So um, these groups can be anywhere between 12 and 16 people. Um, and they may stay the same, um, they may not. Like I said, I hope you all make new friends on this trip. Um, and so, you know, if we get to day four and you wanna be with your new best friend, Kendall, um, you'll be able to switch groups. But uh, for now, you'll be assigned I'm, I'm not reading my own information correctly. Um, you'll be assigned a group and a chaperone. Your chaperone will probably be the same. If we have to switch out kids, you know, one or two kids at a time, we can do that. But for the most part, you're gonna be in a group assigned a specific chaperone and that will be your group. Um, and Quito, I think it'll be a little bit different just because it's a bigger city and we won't have to split up and we'll all stay together, especially since it's kind of a big city. It's the capital of, of Ecuador. So I also want you to start thinking about packing. Um, and I know that some of you are concerned about the carry-on situation and not being able to check bags with regards to liquid, sunscreen, that sort of thing. So I do have some, some sort of travel hacks for you when it comes down to that type of thing, including sunscreen that's um, on a, you know, the stick sunscreen, bug spray wipes instead of like the spray, um, shampoo and conditioner that's like a bar of soap instead of liquid, that kind of thing. So we'll have a meeting about packing, I think in April is our packing meeting. Um, so just keep that in mind and I'll have examples to show you as well. Definitely you're gonna wanna bring something like a hat. I actually have one of those weird hats that has like a duck bill kind of, not a duck bill, but like a duck tail maybe on the back of it to like cover up my neck. <laughs> Cause I feel like that's gonna be a place where I'm gonna get sunburned and not realize it. Um, and the tops of my ears. So definitely you wanna bring a hat. Even if you're not a hat person, it might be a good idea just to bring a hat, just in case. You're gonna need sturdy closed-toed water shoes. So no flip-flops, please don't bring flip-flops with you. And I'm saying closed-toed because I've heard from numerous people that the rocks there are insanely sharp because they're lava. Remember we talked about that during the geology part of the presentation. So these are lava rocks and they can be super sharp, especially when we're going snorkeling. Um, when you're in the water, if you brush up against rocks, they can cut you, they, they're pretty sharp. Um, so bring some sturdy closed toed water shoes. I have um, teens that are open and then they have that, just that rubber closed toe. Um, and then shoes that are appropriate for hiking as well. And they don't necessarily have to be hiking boots, but you know, like a good pair of sneakers that are pretty sturdy with a tread that you've hiked in before that you've walked distances. Um, I always say it, don't bring new shoes on this trip. <laughs> it's always a bad idea to bring new shoes. So bring shoes that you know you can be comfortable in. You're gonna wanna bring two plus bathing suits. Um, and that is because one will probably always be wet <laughs> based on the activities that we're gonna be doing. There's a lot of snorkeling on this trip. Um, if we're going on boats, there's the chance that you might get wet, um, but there's gonna be a fair amount of being in water on this trip. So you're gonna wanna plan ahead and bring um, a couple of different bathing suits. And of course, towels, uh, sort of lightweight sand cloud towels, those types of towels that you can pack up real small. Uh, lightweight long sleeve shirts and pants. Um, so the weather in the Galapagos is gonna be a little bit chillier than it's, than it's going to be here um, because it's the dry season there and it's sort of like their winter down there. So especially in Quito, Quito is like, I don't even know how, how like high up it is, but it's hot, like Quito is high in altitude. So it's gonna be a little bit cooler there as well. Um, so definitely want to bring some lightweight long sleeve shirts and pants to wear if it gets cooler, but also those things protect you against the sun as well. Um, so things like linen uh, would be great to do. Jeans probably not so good, um, but linen and like a wicking kind of, uh, you know, quick dry stuff would be great. So Keto is, Keto is close to 9,500 feet elevation. Feet. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's, it's way up there. <laughs> it's way up there. Yeah. At nighttime, you. it should drop down and down to like 40 ish is what I had read. Mm -hmm. So layers. Mm -hmm. Yep. Layers. I have, um, I, I wear it now. I have like a, a down coat with a hood that packs really small into like this little like satchel that I have. Um, so that's not a bad thing. I get cold really easily though. I'm a big baby. So, um, if you want to pack something like that, that's a good idea, but definitely, um, I'm thinking when you're packing to go on the plane, because it can get pretty cold on the plane. If you wear hooded sweatshirts and, you know, sweatpants on the plane, you'll have those things anyway. Um, so you don't need to take up room in your luggage, uh, if you want to wear those things on the plane and then you'll have them on the trip as well. So good. 
Um, so we will talk about seasickness. There is a pretty good chance that <laughs> some of us are going to get seasick. Um, it can be pretty choppy on the ocean. We are taking boats um, from island to island. And so if you do know that you get motion sickness or seasickness, um, talk to your doctor now. There's a patch that you can get prescribed and it goes behind your ear um, that can help you with seasickness um, and plain sickness if you, if you need it. Duramamine is something that you can take. They have uh, duramamine that has chemicals in it that will help with your, your seasickness. They have all natural duramamine as well with ginger in it, which I took the last time I went on a whale watch in Boston and it really helped on the boat. It was pretty choppy. Um, so plan for it now. There is a plan, however. I've talked to quite a few people who've been on this trip before and there's like a system that they use with these medications that's gonna like help us not get sick <laughs> on the boat. So don't worry, I will have a plan as we get closer and I will tell you the plan and it's gonna be amazing. Um, and like I said, fingers crossed, but I'm not gonna make any promises. I don't, I can't even promise for myself. I don't even know what we're in for. So <laughs> I guess we'll all find out together. Um, the last thing that I'll, I'll say, put in the back of your mind for now is a day pack large enough for an overnight stay. So I have heard that when we go to San, um, I'm sorry, Isabella Island, that we're gonna be away from our luggage. So there may be a night where the, our tour director says, pack a bag, you're not gonna be near your luggage, pack an outfit, a towel and your toiletries to brush and wash and we're gonna go with the bag and your luggage is gonna go somewhere else. Um, so that is a possibility. So make sure you pack something, your backpack that you would take as a carry-on normally or something um, that you can put a change of clothes into um, for an overnight stay away from your luggage. So keep that in mind. EF does give us backpacks. So at the June meeting, um, I'll be giving you an EF backpack. Last year, they changed their manufacturer and the zippers kept breaking, which was not ideal, especially since we were in Japan. Um, so luckily in Japan, there were places for us to purchase, you know, replacement backpacks and, and bags and things like that. That's not going to be the case in the Galapagos. So when I get those backpacks, um, I will give them to you. And if you deem them to be good, you should bring that maybe as a day pack. You can pack it flat in your luggage and then just use it as you need it. You can use it for souvenirs as well. Um, typically on every trip that I've been on, I'll check my luggage on the way back. Um, and then I'll just carry on like souvenirs and stuff that I buy that I don't want to check. So, and every single time my bag has gotten lost. <laughs> so I don't know what that's all about Syracuse airport. Um, but I've actually never arrived back in Syracuse with my luggage. So there you go. Uh-oh. I'm going to go back. Hold on. Oh, no. <laughs> I keep touching it. <laughs> How do I go back? Wait a minute. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so anyways, um, so there's that. And then more to come. So we typically don't get our hotel and flight information until about two months before our trip. Um, because, you know, like I said, they're, I don't know, they're wrangling our passports and there's a lot of us and there's a lot of things that are going on, right? So um, more to come definitely from EF. And as soon as I get flight and hotel information, I will send it along to you so that you can look it up. Um, typically what they send us is links, which is great because then you can just look it up and see what amenities the hotels have, um, what they look like, if they have a pool, that sort of thing. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is that EF is accredited. You can get credit for this trip if that's something that you want to do. You can earn high school uh, credit or college credits. Um, if you're an educator, you can earn professional development hours as well. So that 800 number that I put on there before, um, feel free to give that a call if you're interested in learning more. I know on the website you can learn more about this too. Um, and I know that I, I feel like at least we had one or two teachers that were going on this trip with us. Yep, there you go, Lynn. So um, this, you may be able to count this as, as your professional development, which is great. So I'm also going to ask my tour guide, um, I'm sorry, my EF tour, not guide, but like the, my consultant. Um, when she gets back, she's on a training tour in Paris right now, and I reached out to her, but I, I haven't heard back from her. So um, feel free to look into that because it's pretty cool. So anyway, any other questions about any of this information? Yeah. You don't see anything in the chat? Great. Um, all right. So this is, these are all of our next meetings here. So um, March. As I mentioned, the meeting is right before our 110-day deadline. March 20th 
is the deadline. So that is when you want to deal with your manual payments, switch to automatic. That's when you want to hopefully, fingers crossed, have your passport by then and get your passport information in. Any name changes or information changes, you want to get those in because past the 110 day mark, um, you are going to get charged a fee for changing anything in the system. Okay. Um, at that meeting, we're going to talk a little bit about some Spanish phrases um, that might come in handy. So if you're taking Spanish in school, excellent. You can teach us some really good Spanish phrases like donde está el baño, right? Where's the bathroom? <laughs> we all want to know about that. Um, if you're taking French in high school, though, you're going to learn some Spanish so you can be trilingual at some point in your life. So there we go. And then foods we might encounter um, along our way. I'm going to do a little bit of research. If you want to research some of the foods that you think we might encounter, um, feel free to. I posted in the Facebook page a couple of weeks ago, there's this place called Hope Cafe here in Syracuse, and they serve Ecuadorian food. Um, so I had an Ecuadorian smoothie, and it was delicious. So if you know a place near you that serves Ecuadorian or South American food, feel free to give it a try. Take some pictures and show us at our March meeting. I will not be cooking up a guinea pig for your pleasure um, <laughs> anytime soon. That'll wait till we're on the trip. Um, April 14th, we have a special guest. I'm hoping, fingers crossed. She's actually in Belize right now because she's a world traveler. Her name is Mara. And Mara is was in the Galapagos three weeks ago, I think. So she has gone very recently. Um, she's done this actual tour of the charting Galapagos. She has, was in Ecuador. She went into the rainforest, um, and she is very fresh from Ecuador and from the Galapagos. So she's going to be our special guest. She's going to talk about all the things that we should be thinking about. If you have any questions that you're dying to know about our trip, she will be able to answer them. Um, I do want to tell you that she, uh, I asked her about the, the situation in Ecuador regarding um, some of the, the political unrest that's been down there recently. I don't know if you've seen that in the news. Um, but she was in Quito, just like I said, three weeks ago, and she said that it was perfectly safe. Um, the unrest has been taken care of, and everything seems to be back in order down there. So that's great news for us. Um, and so fingers crossed we'll stay that way. So that's the April 14th date. May 12th, uh, health and safety. So we're going to talk about what to expect um, on the trip for health and safety, what happens if you get sick medications, anything that you should be bringing, how to deal with if you're a, a traveler without a parent on the trip, how we're going to deal with uh, prescription medications and things like that. There are some forms that I'm going to give you too that I'm going to take back on June 9th at our in-person meeting. So signed forms. Nothing needs to be notarized, so uh, you don't have to worry about that. We're going to talk about flights and hotel etiquette, um, what to expect when we get to those things and, and how to, you know, how to plane <laughs> that kind of thing, especially if you've never been on a plane before. I'm actually going to give you like a real live packing list and like you know, we're going to talk about packing and how to deal with some of the liquid situations that we're going to have, um, especially um, sunblock. I just, Facebook, obviously, the Zuck, Zuckerberg is listening to everything we say. Um, and in my Facebook, it just popped up for sunblock that you can brush on. It comes like it's powder and you can brush it. I don't know if I trust that necessarily. Uh, so I clicked on it, of course, clickbait on that sucker. And it's like $43 for a little brush of <laughs> sunblock. So I will not be trying that sunblock on this trip, but there's a very good chance I'm going to be slathering myself in that white, like zinc sunblock stuff that you see all the time. So anyway. Um, I have a little powdered sunblock that yes. goes for my face and it does, does it work? work. Yeah. Mm. But I mean, it's just, Enough for my face. I, right. I don't think I could powder my whole body adequately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is no chance. I would need like one of those like paint spray guns, right? So like just whoosh. Um, I would be also concerned, like they said that it's um, hydrophobic. So the powder doesn't mix in water. So once it's on you, if you go swimming, that the water will just like bead off of you. Yeah, I don't know. I'm concerned. Holly, uh, put some on your face and next time just like get a squirt gun and just spray yourself and we'll see how it goes. Shall do. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Um, and then we're also going to talk about adults on tour as well. So just kind of, um, you know, a quick little how to adult <laughs> and expectations that way. So that's at the uh, May meeting and then June 9th in person. Um, we will meet at Camp Hoover in Tully 
So this meeting is mandatory unless you have an extenuating circumstance. And hopefully I'm telling everyone in enough time so that you can make it to this meeting. Um, lunch is gonna be provided. I'm hoping to get some Ecuador, Ecuadorian foods to bring so that we can try them over there. Um, this is where I'm gonna get copies from you. I'm gonna hand you your backpack. Uh, we're gonna get to know each other and then I'll have a whole presentation from EF Tours and that will be our final hurrah before we set off on July 10th for the Galapagos and it will be amazing. Our gateway is Syracuse International Airport, um, Hancock International Airport here in Syracuse, just so you know. Um, and I don't know what the flights are going to be like, but as soon as I get information about them, I will pass that on to you all. So that's that. So those are our next meetings. Does anyone have any questions, comments, concerns about any of this information? Bring everybody back up so I can see you. Nothing? Oh, you guys are easy. <laughs> Did you see my post about the frigate bird from the American um, History Museum there, the frigate bird who harasses other birds and like steals their prey from them? My favorite part about that was they also uh, find a bird that's eaten recently and they like harass it so much that it pukes up the food that they just ate and then they eat it. Gross. <laughs> Yeah, you're okay to bring a regular suitcase in addition to an overnight bag. That's no problem. Um, the carry-on, you know, the carry-on standard for international trips, uh, you know, I usually just look at Delta because I'm I typically fly Delta, um, and I have I have I feel like Delta is the airline that typically leaves like from our gateway that we go on. Um, so if you look at their international guidelines for carry-on, just follow them. They're going to be within an inch or so across airlines. So I really, I've, I've never been given any hassle um, with regards to carry-on luggage and sizing. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Nothing? All right. Chaperones, you got anything? Holly, Amy? Nope, I answered that one. Yes, I can make color copies at Hoover, so feel free to just bring your passport along with you and I will make a copy for you. All right, great. That's it for me tonight. Like I said, kind of a, well, I guess a short meeting. I've been talking for 40 minutes. It seems short, it probably seems very long to you all. <laughs> um, but next time we'll have a little bit more stuff. And if you know any great Spanish phrases that you wanna bring us and talk to us in Spanish, feel free to bring them along. I have also heard that the Spanish is like pretty straightforward in the Galapagos and in Ecuador. It's not like a, you know, sort of a linguistic battle to, to speak Spanish there. So um, I'm looking forward to that because I'm very like high school Spanish. <laughs> Hola, como estas? <laughs> so we'll learn a little bit of Spanish. We'll get that going and I'll see everybody in, I don't know, March, month, 110 days. Make sure name, passport, gender, all the things, they're in there exactly under passport as they are in EF Tours. You can do it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to email me, and I'll look forward to seeing you all in March. Sound good? Yay! All right, soon, this is going to be us, the beach, the palm trees, the lizards, the crabs. It's going to be amazing. So stay excited, people. 143 days until we leave. I can't wait. All right, everybody. Take care. We'll see you soon. <laughs>